this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips and advice for new college instructors, as well as advice and motivation more generally for those in academia or in all act careers. Today, I want to talk about motivating your students using the ARCS model. And so I thought I'd go over this model. I learned about it recently in a leadership program that I'm taking. So I hope you find it helpful as well to motivate your own students. So this model was created by John Keller and basically it has four parts, A-R-C-S. And the premise here is that there's four ways in this model to motivate students. So if you can kind of get a sense of your students or your audience and know what motivates them, then you can create activities or lessons or whatever the case may be that will motivate them to actually get things done, to accomplish the objectives of your course. So the A stands for attention. Okay, so some students are motivated by things that really grasp their attention. So this might be that you let them choose the topic that they're gonna, they're gonna write their paper on because they can choose something that's attention grabbing for them, right? Or it might be like you're gonna create something really cool that students had never seen before because that will grab their attention and keep them focused and again, motivate them to complete whatever the activity is. This might mean making something using Canva, and I have videos about Canva that I'll link below, or creating a video, or finding a video that's really touch and grabbing, or a website, or the case may be. So this first one, again, it's more about, hey, like it's really enticing and motivating the students because it's really attention grabbing. The R stands for relevance. So making the, again, the lesson or the assignment really relevant to your students. So this might be, it's really relevant because it's part of their major, or it's really relevant because it's gonna have a positive effect on their career. It's really relevant in the current community or social moment in time. And so they're gonna be motivated to do it because they know it's gonna be useful immediately to them. So what is relevant to your students? What is gonna be meaningful for them? And knowing that, you can design again your course accordingly and motivate these students who are like, you know what, if it's relevant to me, then I'm willing to put in the effort. Maybe I won't enjoy it, maybe it's a bit boring, but I know it's gonna be relevant to my life and that's enough for me, right? It doesn't have to be attention grabbing if it's relevant to me, right? This might be the type of student that you have or some of your students might have this kind of approach versus someone who's like, it can be relevant, but like if it's not attention grabbing, I still, I'm not gonna care enough, right? I don't have that ability to care enough unless it's attention grabbing. So that's more of the A. And then the C is confidence. So having lessons activities that boost the confidence of your students. So maybe it's, okay, I'm gonna break down this activity into a lot of small parts so that the student is confident that they can accomplish every small part of this unit. Or maybe it's, I'm gonna have a lesson, but I'm gonna pause every five minutes and like look for questions and like volunteer information based off of asking them what they found most interesting in the past five minutes, right? So giving them potentially like small little elements can help them boost their confidence in completing something. Or it might be, okay, like you have to do this complicated thing, but you're gonna do it about something that you're really familiar with. So you have to break down your favorite movie using this analytical structure, right? Or you're gonna have to explain this math proof, but let's use a math proof that you're familiar with from a course last semester. So giving them that confidence can potentially motivate some of your students to finish something, to complete a lesson, an activity, et cetera, because like, you know what, I can do this, right? And that's enough to motivate them. And then the S stands for satisfaction. So they're motivated by being satisfied with their work. So this might be maybe you're giving like some kind of reward or prize for completing something, not just a grade, but maybe it's some kind of a competitive type of assignment. And that can motivate students because they want to be the winners. They want to be satisfied knowing, hey, I'm the one that won this activity. Or might be satisfied because you're like really equitable with them. You design something and you make clear to them, hey, this is something that everybody can really benefit from, that everybody can succeed in. I designed it in a way that you can really work on it and succeed. And so students can be satisfied by like, you know what, they gave you know, a lot of attention to this design, I can see it, I can see how I can succeed if I you know, put the work in and that's like satisfying. It's not a scary assignment, right? It's something that they know that they can accomplish. So this kind of goes into confidence too, but there's an element of like, they thought about me when they were designing this. They didn't just do it for that A plus student. They thought about all of their students, right? They didn't think about just that good writer, but they also made the assignment possible for those who are more of a 
illustrators, right? Or more kinesthetic in their learning. And then, you know, this, so again, this is the ARCS model by Keller. There's also another version of this that adds an M to it at the beginning, the M standing for mindset. So for some students, yeah, maybe they see it's relevant. Maybe they're, they, it's attention grabbing to them. It boosts their confidence. It, leads them, it will leave them satisfied. But if they don't have the mindset to really approach it, that can obviously cause a lot of you know, um, detriments. So maybe what's going on in the world around them is giving them a very negative mindset to anything, right? So like thinking about like trauma-informed pedagogy, right? You know, in that case, you might have to figure out like, okay, like how can we get you in the right mindset to succeed in this activity? So giving that some thought too, of like how their emotional state might be affecting their ability to work in your course would be really helpful. And that's where that M comes into play. But again, these four elements, arcs. So is it attention grabbing? Is it relevant? Is it confidence boosting? Is it satisfying? So these four aspects might be what motivates your students the most. And so if you know, if you can get a sense of, you can discuss with students, hey, you know, here's a scenario, right? And like, why would you, what would you do in this scenario, right? And kind of have answers that, that connect to each of the four. Like, okay, well, most students chose answer A and that answer connected to being, like the attention being the motivating. Or like 10 of my students chose relevance and I can tell that from the answer they chose. So giving them like scenarios or asking them outright, hey, here's these four motivating factors in order, like which is the most motivating to least motivating for you, right? And once you know that, you can, again, tweak your designs and your courses accordingly to make it motivating to your students. So I'll have some links relevant to this model below in case you wanna learn more and other links relevant to what I discussed today too. If you want to be helpful, click like and let me know and subscribe if you don't wanna lose out on future videos. And I'll have a video on the screen as well that kind of connects to other frameworks of instructional design in case you want to watch those next. I have a whole playlist. I'll see you next time.